Hey fellow network marketer, in today's video we will be interviewing Jarkko Huttunen. Jarkko has been in the network marketing industry for the previous six years and Jarkko has an interesting backstory because many times we hear these stories in network marketing that people come from, from uh, having no job, being absolutely broke and from there they find network marketing and network marketing saves them, kind of. Uh, but Jarko has the opposite story because six years ago when he started in network marketing he was doing very well he was super successful he his last title was the CEO uh, in a company a successful IT company he was living the dream uh, but for some reason Jarko well, wanted to make a shift and he became full-time network marketer and unlike many people who build uh, their business for years to become full-timer, Jarko started as a full-timer from the day one. So let's go see uh, and interview Jarko to find out how that was possible for him. Okay, super. Hey, welcome Jarko to this interview. Um, super honored to have you here and uh, let's just dive in straight into the subject. Uh, I already have told, uh, told the people to the viewers uh, a little bit about your backstory, uh, but, but we would obviously like to hear it a little bit deeper. So since you have a, a, a magnificent story and also one of, one of those kind of a stories that has, is not the most common one to the network marketing industry, you know, many times people come from a situation where they desperately need the money or, or they are like uh, in a desperate situations, but you have come to the whole industry kind of from a place of, of abundance. So tell us a little bit about your story. Sure, I'd, I'd love to, but I have to say that first that I'd say that nowadays when network marketing industry is growing so rapidly, it, it is getting more and more stable and it's getting more positive attention nowadays. I think that there are more people jumping from, you know, high corporate careers or highly successful entrepreneurs and such. I think more and more of those people are starting now in our industry, but you are absolutely right. Most of the people are looking for opportunities. And um, I think there are two kinds of people, those who are running away from a situation in their life or they are running towards their goals. And I probably was the one of the latters there, there were a great many changes that I needed in my life, uh, even though everything financially was actually perfectly fine. But my, in a nutshell, my, my backstory is that I was, first of all, born in an entrepreneurial family. I mean, even I would, before I was born, my grandfather and grandparents, all of them were highly successful entrepreneurs. And of course, my mother and father and also. So I grew up seeing the entrepreneurial um, mentality. And for me, it's it's been... It's been blooming throughout my childhood as well. And I've recognized that in my sense that I had a problem with authority. I never took, I never liked when somebody told me it needs to be this way because of this, no questions asked. So I, I, had, I had that issue. If I was thinking that there is a better way to do it, then, but and somebody told me to do it exactly in their way, I had problems with that. So I think that's, that was some, sort of the first sign of an entrepreneurial spirit, you know, constant development of something. Um, so anyway, I ended up uh, being a young entrepreneur when I was 18. I founded my first company uh, and with my family, we opened a couple of restaurants and I ended up running them as well. But then I realized I was 21 at a time and I realized I'm living somewhere in Northern Finland or mid parts of Finland, but Northern Europe. And I'm 21 year old and I'm an entrepreneur here with restaurants. Is this the rest of my life? I sort of figured something else. So um, I went into, I went back to school. I went to, um, to study first as an information technology engineer. And after that, went to my BBA studies. I always wanted to do international business since being in IT wasn't social enough for me. So um, since I was about six, I did martial arts and uh, got highly excited about Asian cultures throughout my childhood, basically. Um, so it was a dream come through for me to, to go to Asia. So in my BBA studies, I specialized in East Asian business, especially Chinese business at that time. It was in, back in 2000. And in 2000, I moved to China. I lived there for a couple of years and, and studied the language and, and the culture. And yeah, so I did Chinese business afterwards, you know, Western guy speaking fluent Mandarin at the beginning of 2000. So it was sort of a hit in career wise. So I, I had a lot of the career, a few, few companies were just headhunting me and so forth. And, and I was on a speed, you know, I, I really succeeded on, on that, what I went to do, um, finding my niche and really loving what I do. But then it ended up so that I, I was traveling around 200 days per year at worst. 
And at the beginning, it was awesome. You know, you get to see the world and you're flying in an airplane and all that was just, just freaking awesome. That's, that's what I always dreamed that how cool it's going to be. But, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you did the long enough and it becomes tax saving. And it's not like you fly to China and then you have like a two days off in order for you to settle down with the time zones and stuff. But you actually, you know, you don't sleep in an airplane. You wake up in the morning, you go to the factory. And in two weeks, you go through 14 factories in 14 different cities. So pretty much only thing you need, only thing you see are the highways, airports and the factories. So traveling expands your horizons. And no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's only that kind. So anyway, I got tired of that. So I quit that. And then, then I was thinking then what's my next career move? I had the, had the uh, background in IT and, um, you know, the old saying that the dog is the man's best friend. Mm. I think the nerd is the man's best friend nowadays because <laughs> everything, everything is in ID. So I had a lot of nerd friends. They're, they're still good friends of mine. So I, I founded a software testing company with one of them and we actually got it off, hit it off really, really well from the very beginning. And we got eight different countries and we were doing uh, software testing, especially in VoIP industry, in telecommunications. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. And after about a year after that, um, another company gave me a call, a headhunt call, and they said that we have a little logistical problem in one of our companies and, and we need you to fix it. And I said that, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go. I have my own company running now and everything is going smoothly. But then they increased the stakes, salary in other words, high enough so that my backbone sort of broke. And okay, fine, I will go there for two months because this, I, was, I was located in Helsinki at the moment in Finland, and, and this was in Cyprus. So mm -hmm. originally I was supposed to fly to Cyprus for only two months to fix the logistical part. And um, well, I, long story short, I ended up being there four and a half years and, <laughs> and I became a CEO for that company. And during my presidency, we did public listing to uh, stock exchange in UK or with the mother company we did that I was running the operational um, company. And um, yeah, again, I, I hit the goal. I mean, I was living under the palm tree somewhere in, in Southern Europe. Uh, it, was, it was lovely, I loved Cyprus. Uh, I had, you know, the salary was high. I had my Harleys and Hammer and, you know, villa on the, on the mountain and everything again. But there was, uh, there's always a but. <laughs> yeah. And my but was that I was, I, was, uh, I was getting 38, I was 38 years old. And one morning I just woke up and I realized that I, I have no life. I'm, I'm spending 10 to 12 hours a day seven days a week working, mm. even Christmas Eve's and everything. I was sending emails and on the phone. Yeah, grandma, I'll, I'll be right there. And, you know, I, I had no life. Naturally, I had no girlfriend, no wife, no kids. Uh, I, had, I had no life, period. I had no free time. And I'm not sure if it was a mid, midlife crisis or it was a sort of borderline burnout, but, but something happened, something clicked. And one morning I just woke up and I, I quit. So I dropped the mic jumped into an airplane, flew back to Finland. I was really open. I, I had no idea what I'm going to do. I was, I was getting close to 40 and I've, I've built 40 years, well, including childhood, but 40 years I've, I've been targeting that. that and, and when I hit it, it was not at all what I was thinking it would be. So I was, uh, I was in a bad place in the sense that I had no idea what I want to do with my life. And I know that there are many people who are 50 or 60 or 70 and they still don't know what they want to do with their life. But I, I came to realize that there are basically just three things that I want, three things only. So that should make it easy. So what I needed was health, of course. Uh, without the health, the, everything else is out of the window. Even you would be the richest, richest man in Babylon. You would still need health. That's number one. Second of all is, is that I wanted money. I mean, I enjoyed the high salary. You get all the gadgets and I, I enjoy them. I mean, I, I love quality. I love traveling and all that. But the third thing that I never had was time. And I know this is now, I'm taking this a little bit deeper now, but when the older you get, the more you realize that the time is the most valuable currency that you have by far. There's, there's, there's nothing more important than that. So I, I started to look, different options it, it was back in 19 uh, sorry the 2014 um, I was looking for options and there were you know Amazon was building really fast at that point and you could have your own shops and of course been for a while but for me it was a new thing in a sense I was looking looking for drop shipping options and, and many others and well then direct sales network marketing were introduced to me and and of course I didn't buy that <laughs> come on it's not an industry I'm, I'm, I'm a CEO I'm not going to do something like that but uh, when, 
when I was shown the numbers of the, the of, I know that most of the network marketing companies have tremendously good products. So we went through the products and we went the timing and prediction to the future and, and many, 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 many different things. And I even took it to the level that I jumped into an airplane and I, I flew to Norway to meet the founders of our company and the CEO and, and just to make sure that, that this is a company that I can build with. And once I was convinced enough, then I went full time from the day one. I went full time into this industry, and and uh, I was, you know, the, the friends of mine who are still in the corporate world, they they thought that I've gone mad, first quitting my quitting job and then going into network marketing. So they thought that I've lost it. Uh, but yeah, now they are patting my back that that, that was a really good decision. Maybe I should do it as well. So yeah, but that's my story. I mean, I, I did well in in social terms in many ways. Really didn't do any well, any anything good basically. I didn't do well in in my own terms, and uh, I was looking for a way to get money, health, and uh, and time. Yeah. So that, I, I found a way to separate time and money from each other, and, and exactly. that's it. Also, one of the one of the fascinating things about your story is that uh, you came from a, a successful background. You've built businesses. You've been CEO, and this and that and the other. And when you came to the, you entered the world of network marketing. You instantly took it full time. You jumped full time into it, and you never have done this part time. You immediately pre- broke through to become full time entrepreneur. Uh, and and why this is fascinating is that uh, it it all tells that that you're used to building businesses, and you know that businesses have the same fundamentals. And when you do those things, you become full timer no matter what. Like you didn't have an ounce of doubt. Will will this work? See, for for me, I'm like you said that I'm an entrepreneur. I don't consider myself as a network marketer. I'm yeah. an entrepreneur. This is my company that I am invoicing my mother company, basically, who's handling everything for me. We all have our good companies. So I'm an entrepreneur. I just yeah. happen to be in the industry of network marketing. It could be that I I'm an entrepreneur in IT or in real estate. I'm an entrepreneur in anything. I'm just an entrepreneur first and foremost who just happened to chose network marketing because it is by far the smartest business there is. I mean, the, this industry has power that people don't understand, but that's the reason actually that when we talk about duplication and when we talk about the risk-free investment, you can, you could literally make yourself a multimillionaire without investing a dime with a zero euro investment and you can scale it to the global. And, and it, it's unbelievable. I think the, one of the reasons why more and more successful career people, successful, quote unquote, uh, why high rollers, so to say, are looking at direct sales or network marketing nowadays is that um, the approach has changed. You know, before it could be that we were selling it more as a, you know, this network marketing thing that I am in and, and really just selling the dream. Uh, actually, it would have been more of a hope. Maybe I will hit that. Yeah. But when you approach it as a business, there's, I mean, I'm not even mentioning the word network marketing anymore. This is the smartest distribution channel to all, mm-hmm. to the end consumer, to the manufacturer of the product and us, of course, as a marketing channel. So we are just a customer acquisition organization. That's it. Mm-hmm. Smart, as, smart as, as it gets. But the reason why, why the, uh, the, there are so many people jumping now on board is that because we message it differently. And there's a one formula that I've noticed. At the very beginning, I have to be honest, uh, <laughs> if I see this as a business, I was ashamed of what we were doing. I was really, you know, uh, how, how do I put this in correct terms and really trying to bounce that I've made the correct decision at the, at the inside, the internal child of mine was just like, you know, crying that, oh my God, what have I done? Network marketing. But um, so I was targeting wrong people at the very beginning. But then I come to think of it again as if, if I have this kind of a product concept and my, my goal is to scale it globally, what do I need to do in order to do that? And if, if I look at it as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur, if this was my company, how would I do it? So one of the key players, the key things, of course, that is are the players that who we're going to work with. Mm. So who do I hire? So once I started to prospect the correct kind of people, I started to get results. But there's a huge difference. But there was a one formula that I noticed that I, I want to share. I hope this will remove some of your, of your audience's blocks of talking to high rollers. The more and more successful the person is, more likely they are to see opportunities than they see threats. When, when, when somebody has succeeded in their life, it is more likely that they will see this as an opportunity 
you know, they can do risk assessment and they can do, they can see where the product uh, the company is going. So it is more likely that they will say yes. But if you've been working, you know, if you, if you talk to a friend who's been working, I don't know, um, cashier at, the, at a supermarket for the past 40 years, what we do is so out of ordinary that they might see this, this as a threat because the, the, the world view is more narrow. True. What is possible is, is way, way, way more narrow. But the person who already is running several companies or uh, is, is uh, running about as a CEO in, in large organization, they see opportunities instead of threats. So I would highly recommend to make your five list or make your top 10 list of the highly successful people that you have and go for them. You literally have nothing to lose. If you have zero entrepreneurs or zero CEOs in your organization right now, and you go to talk five of them, and all of them say, no, I'm not interested in network marketing. What have changed? What changed? You still have zero entrepreneurs or CEOs in your organization. So you will literally have nothing to lose. But what if some of them will say yes? What if that someone is William? What if that someone is myself or somebody, Randy Gates? What if? Exactly. You literally have nothing to lose. So just go nuts. They will see opportunity. <laughs> and if they don't start, they're going to tell you that, all right, I'll give you a few pointers. Do this to make you exactly. successful. And, and this is one of the one of the uh, major things that I think you can exactly contribute to the people because you yourself used to be in that position and you still are. Uh, what, what do you think if you think of that moment? Uh, you said you walked through the numbers. You had a little bit of inner conflict that network marketing, uh, uh, but but still you you went through the numbers, you checked through everything, kind of a, if I was to approach uh, like high roller, uh, what, what would be the angle? What would be the, the well, obviously everybody is an individual, but if there, if there was one universal way, what would be the most important things that that high roller most likely will be interested about? Like you said that we are all individuals. Of course, the best one is that we have, we have something to offer that, that he's looking for. So in order for us to really know that we, like if even if you would be selling the pen, like the Wolf of Wall Street is explaining, you don't sell the pen with its qualities. You start asking questions and finding the needs and based on what you just said, I think I have a perfect offer for you. So that, that would be the perfect approach in order for you to do that. You have to know them, of course. But in universal way, I would, you know, that's a really hard question, William, because in my case, if, if I'm approaching someone like that and they know my background, even I wouldn't know them personally. I'm just going to, this is what I use. I say that, look, hey, hi, it's Jake here. You know, do you have a two minutes or should I call you tomorrow? Yeah. And then you say, yeah, I have two minutes because it's short time. Then I explain that, look, I've, I've uh, six years ago, I founded my own company and I've been, I've been polishing and harnessing it. Now it's where everything is going perfectly smoothly. Right now we're expanding super fast. I'm not talking about opening new cities or new offices. I'm talking about opening new countries and continents. And I started to go through my contact list of who are the people that actually understand international business. Now you were on top of my list. You, you're one of those guys that came to my mind. You've done tremendously good in Asia and we're opening Asia right now. So uh, let's have a lunch. It's on me. Uh, let's go through. I'll show you what I'm doing. And I'm sure that there are at least five different names or your contacts that I can, I could start expanding the business with. And of course, you being a smart guy, it could be that I'd be expanding it with you. I'm not sure about that yet. But uh, so tomorrow or day after tomorrow, which one is good for you? I have a slot here uh, for lunch. So that's pretty much approach, but that, that depending again, if the person knows who I am with my, with my background, if you've been a truck driver for the past 20 years, it might not work. So you need, you need to understand the, who's talking to and whom. Exactly. So in my approach, I'm, I'm using both of those. I know what they are interested of. Even they are highly successful and they have their full life, so to say. But if I come with that approach, that we're, we're expanding super fast and we're looking for always, you know, new opportunity. I know that what they are thinking in subconsciously in, in, in their back of the head is that, what do I get out of this? Yeah. And at the same time, what if, what if, whoa, that sounds interesting. Maybe they explode and I'm missing it out. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's do that. The, and this is interesting conversation. And one of the reasons why I wanted to ask that very question is that uh, as everybody can see from your answer is that there is no, uh, there is no magical way to approach those. Uh, I mean, uh, we teach people and, and in the, in the master classes that I provide, uh, the, the way of invitation is very focused on why specifically did you choose to contact this person? And I believe that a lot of it comes down to exactly, and you just summarized that as well. 
a lot of it just comes down, the actual concept doesn't change, it's the same concept and you pitch it for the person in the actual presentation in literally a minute or so. But the, the way you prime your, the, 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 the way you contact them, with the way you approach them, you prime them in a way where you tell why specifically you chose them and now for example you chose to a little bit uplift them saying that hey I value you because you've been in this career path for su su such and such long and I, and I think that this becomes uh, important for example when uh, normal people like myself approach people like you uh, is that we don't try to be the, the guy but we can you know uplift you like hey you're, I value your opinion you're, you're super successful you know that uh, yeah although I have to, I have to say something because they did sort of a um, you're one of the most charismatic leaders that I know actually in this industry. So it's funny to me that you say that us versus, you know, you. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any separation. I, I think that if you look at statistics in, in network marketing, um, people like me, are we are anomalies. <laughs> I mean, the, even though more, more of us is starting, but it, most likely we're not going to break the bank. Mm. I mean, somebody through a CEO or some highly successful person they might provide the key people but it's it's quite rare still that they would jump to be full-time so this business is really built without the ceos or with, without the high rollers they, they are just great i don't know how how, how even to explain this but this build, the business is still built with mm -hmm. everyday people who are hungry for change like i said that there are two kinds of people those who are running after their dreams and those who are running away from the current situation. Yeah. So those who are running away from the current situation, they're the ones who are actually going to make it because they have a need. They really have a need for that. But the people who are running towards the dream, of course, I, I have my, one of my favorite books, Start With Why here. And the people who are running after their dreams are, of course, extremely powerful as well. But there is a great chance that they already have a good tool for that. And mm -hmm. this would be just one of those tools. But if they're smart, they're just going to find a handful of people and give them to leaders like yourself and you run with them. I just open a new income channel for myself. So Jarko, uh, one more question. Uh, you've been in the industry now for the previous six years. And, and I know that when we talk about recruiting, which is one of the absolute building blocks when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, uh, to this industry, because if you don't recruit anybody, you have a sales job. And 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 big portion, big part of network marketing is building the actual network of distributors who sell their products. Well, the fun difference is that uh, Yarko is way more successful than me, and Yarko has sponsored. We have been the same amount of time in the business, and and, and this bitch has sponsored ten times less people, and and he's making just way bigger than myself. So so. Uh, and, and, and this is, um, well, you are actually an extraordinary person when it comes to network marketing because most of the people sponsor who become super successful actually sponsor amount that you've done in six years in one every single year. So, so what it tells me is that you knew a lot of stuff about leading people uh, up front when you already came. You didn't, you didn't have to mess up with most of your contacts in the beginning phase of your career. So tell me about like, what do you think are the key components? And this is kind of a big question I know, but uh, it's just fascinating one. What are kind of the key components that has allowed you to, to reach such a high level success with so minimal recruiting? You know, it, it, this, is, this, is a, this is a topic that sort of hurts me in a sense that I know if, if I were to spun, you are teaching perfect way to sponsor. If, if, if I just only used that tool, I would be three or four titles higher than I am. I would multiply my income if I were just doing that. I'm, and I, I don't even dare to say out loud the reasons why I'm not doing it. Because it, it, with your formula, it's super easy. Anybody can do it. Um, I'm just lazy enough, I assume. But there are three different ways to basically build your organization. One of them is with your contact, with sponsoring, which of course we should do all the time, two to three every single month at least for throughout the 20, 40 year career. One of them is, uh, is, is with your time, which, which I'm using. So I'm, I guess what my what superpower is, is, so to say, is to is, um, spot talent and really bring that out in people and, and make them run. So I'm spending a lot of time to build with my team. And third one, of course, is with money, that it, when you're making crap load, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Um, 
but I, I suppose the first step would be that I'm 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 trying to spot the hungriest people in my team. I don't care where they are in the organization. I'm just gonna pick them up. I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage them. I'm gonna you know feed the hunger, throw some gasoline into their fire, and bringing them up and lifting them up. Now there are many many different things that you're gonna do in that. Now I I should check my source. I don't remember what great man it was. It could be Napoleon Hill or someone like that. Sorry. Napoleon Bonaparte, actually. Uh, somebody says that those who move emotions move masses. Sort of a free translation. I just translated from Finnish. Um, so I guess that's what we, what we do. Um, inspiring the person or helping them to see what is possible. We all have unlimited abilities and power inside us, every single one of us. Mm. But surrounding society are sort of pushing us down and we, we have a tendency of looking at back to our history, you know, that what, what I am, are we determining everything we are based on what's behind us? So what I'm doing is I just sort of a block that and talk about the future, what you could be and what you should be, what you already are, you just don't understand that. I bring that up, like seed, putting little seeds, exactly basically the same way what you do with, with sponsoring. You know, you go through, you invite, you present, and then you follow up. So uh, with the follow up, you're nothing. You just, you know, sowing seeds and follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up until they start. Most yeah. will. Um, so the same thing goes here as well. So the, the, there are a lot of cases where, where a person have I've been in contact with my team all the time, and they don't succeed, they don't succeed, they don't succeed for one and a half years, and they got only a few customers, and then all of a sudden something happens, and they start like in Mario Bros, you know, jumping levels. <laughs> <laughs> start going so and at the end of the day i mean this is a this is a whole different discussion we can do a training session of this for hours and hours and about will. leadership <laughs> but yeah uh, but it, it really comes down to making the person see them succeed and what happens psychology you you have to override the entire life history for them mm. in order for them to understand that okay i'm not that i, yeah. I can be something that i am and then we just give them tools to do that, encourage them to do that. And that's, I know that's probably not the answer that you were looking for, but, but that's what we do. Just Actually, spot the talent. You know, in, in, I have to say one more thing. In, yeah. When it comes to looking at this as a, as a leader in, um, in a traditional industries so of corporate, the same as our, you know, actually the CEO of, of, of our company, um, he, um, he said something smart. He said that hire slowly and fire fast. Mm. And that's a really good mentality for a CEO when it comes to corporate. Sort of the same thing here as well, except we don't fire people fast. Hire slowly, yes, in the sense that we want to find the specific kind of people, those who are running away or running towards, that's it. That's actually sums up most of the people. And we can recruit really fast, but the firing fast is not the case because in most cases, if, if you are able to to detect the, the hunger they are, what, what they are after, and you can find the strength, the, the sort of a, we all have weaknesses and strengths. If you, can, you can, if you can spot their strengths and start talking about their strengths only, because that's comfortable for them. Mm. Now, if, if you start in my team and I tell you, okay, this is what we're gonna do. You give me a hundred list and give me their phone numbers and we're gonna start calling them, all right? So that's not comfortable to anyone unless you are a phone salesperson, phone salesperson. So that's, that's most likely in the field of weaknesses to most people. So let's not do that. Mm. So it's going to find first the way that is most comfortable that you don't actually feel like even working. Yeah. And then we find that strength and, then, and, and so forth. So we just, that, that was the most simple example that I could give, but we dig a little deeper. The, the downsides of this is that you might end up investing your time into people that is going to quit anyway. How are you going to detect that? How are you going to spot the person who's not going to quit is on a whole other training session again that mm. there's a difference but so many people are okay i could talk about this for the rest of the day but one more one more point so so many people are whenever you have someone starting in your team i know that whomever you are now who's, who's listening now i know that you you can relate to this when somebody starts in your team you want to make them the next leader in your team you want to make them the president or fleet commander in your in your organization you not yeah. them. So that's the problem. That what that's what we are forcing to the people, and that's that's not how we build organization. It's a good intentions, 
I mean, we want them to succeed, but there's a difference between understanding the finding the hunger in them and how do you feed that? There's a great difference. It needs to come from them. You're just the one who shows it to them. Look, this is what you can be. Maybe you should be. And that's it. Yeah, Jarko, uh, that is uh, that is actually a very uh, good point, and 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 you said that that uh, whether this was the answer that I was looking for, but 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 this actually was more than that because what you said there was a, a important key and and kind of a secret that most people don't think about, and it, you said that uh, just like in recruiting, you follow up the people who 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 are not willing to start yet. And, and that you should continue that follow-up process all the way uh, uh, through when they sign up then they just tell that they are they are in but it doesn't yet necessarily mean that they do anything but they have given you their first yes now your job is to continue following them up to get them to actually do and that's a brilliant mindset in a way because many times we think of this concept of leadership uh, it's such a big uh, big form of an art that we don't have kind of a uh, that, that it's just so, so big of an art that we don't know quite what we are supposed to do but if you put it in, a, in in that way it's just you know we just continue following up on people building belief to them and and and, and building on their strengths f getting them to feel comfortable that's that's all it is so so it, it kind of a, of course there's a lot of things a lot of layers that you can do but still it's kind of a, yeah that's a cool way to put it it, it, it has its own term and we're going to do a training video hopefully with you uh, it's 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 called internal prospecting so it, it, you know when somebody starts you, you prospect them through instagram or somewhere in some social media it's like selling them the gym card but they haven't started going to the gym so that's the point that that's the entire point i mean even if they do their 30 or 60 or 90 day runs at the very beginning but then they all of a sudden you know die <laughs> they're not building business anymore then it is our job as entrepreneurs get them back get them back on track and understanding that it, life happens all the time everything is about timing always so whenever somebody i'm prospecting someone and they said i'm not interested i, I always say that look it's uh, i understand it's clearly the wrong timing for you so i'm gonna try this out i'm gonna i'm gonna keep building and hey I'm, my goal is to get 500 customers to my team in next two months so i'll give you a call after two months and let's go for lunch let's see wish me luck so usually they get me back. But the same same rule applies also to, to so that's a that's a follow up for prospecting. But the same rule applies also for internal prospecting. So it is our job to really make sure that all of them are being noticed. That's the first point. It's not about getting them fired up immediately. If you can, then please do. Yes, your business is going to explode. But that we don't forget them, that we keep noticing them. It could be that your next highest rank in your organization is already in your organization. That it could be that after two years, in 2022, they're going to start and hit the, hit the highest rank. They're going to overtake you. There's a great chance for that. We just have to... They already said yes. They already know you. They already know your products. They already know your compensation plan. But something prevented them from starting. So that's the best group of people that we could talk to and that's called leadership super hey thank you so much Jarko, for this uh, interview uh was super valuable tips was was just phenomenal so um yeah with this any last words <laughs> or hey thanks, thanks thanks for inviting I, I have to speaking of leadership i have to say that your course is something that i am distributing to my team i showed it to my team leaders as they start they started to get immediate result i showed that on monday and on sunday one of my leaders had three start meetings wow all of them 100 percent unknown people only through instagram we just follow step by step word for word what you did and that's the part when i started to feel stupid why have i not done that before i would i would be a fleet commander in our team if i were to do that with the leadership we're doing so i just might <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and and you told me that story a couple of days ago, and uh, I'm super honored to hear that the the tips shared in the recruiting master class uh, can be taken so rapidly, and 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 you can literally you the 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 price of the the whole idea of the course is that you can literally make the price the investment of the course back with your first conversion that you do it in the same week later, and then it's phenomenal to hear that that it it, it it's happening. So super.
Super. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, I, I, it's actually so simple and it's so fast that it made me feel stupid. What have I been doing for the past six years? So, so live and learn. Thank you for that. <laughs> hey, thank you, Jarko. And everybody else watching, super. Thank you. Thank you for hanging around with us and speak to you soon. Hey, fellow network marketer. Thank you for watching the interview all the way through. I think from, from Yarko's story, we can all get inspired and finally start to reach out, gather the courage and reach out for all the high rollers and all the people in our chicken list. Now, in the interview, there was uh, mentioned these methods that Yarko has started to use, which are from my course called Recruiting Master Class. Uh, I will leave the link to the description where you can check out this uh, Master Recruiters community. Uh, the core of it is that I will give you, first of all, free training uh, that, that teaches you a framework how you can build out presentations that literally last less than 60 seconds and yet still are capable of closing up to 20% of your contacts. Now, this is a presentation formula that I've been using for, for a long time already. I've sponsored hundreds of people around the globe with these 60 second presentations and I'm going to teach you teach the framework for you for free. So, uh, yeah, all you have to do is go to masterrecruiter.info, www.masterrecruiter.info. I'm going to put the link to the description as well. Uh, and hey, uh, join the community and see you in the next video.